Hello everyone, welcome back to school. I'm happy to see you in this 2021 school year. I hope that someday I do actually get to see you, maybe in the fourth nine weeks. I'll see you in person, but if not, then that's okay because you got to hear my voice and I sometimes get to see you all in Flipgrid and that can be enough, I guess. All right, so the point of this video is we are not going to do something brand new today. Instead, we're gonna go and look through the most missed questions on the benchmark that you took before Christmas. So let me just open up that folder. We go into, you're my eighth grade class, regular eighth grade math. My other classes are algebra. We'll go to the second nine weeks, math, 2020. You can see that I can look back through all of your years. And here we can see question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 along the top. And then the green one, the green box, in the first row, the green box is the right answer. And the percent that it shows in the green box is the number of people that picked that answer. So the first one that sticks out to me as being extremely low in these first 10 questions is question number seven. And question number seven, I'm now moving it to the middle. Answer choice B was only chosen 33% of the time. And in question number 10, G was chosen 40% of the time. Oh, also answer choice, answer six. Six was missed very frequently. So we'll do six, seven, and 10. In this video, I want you to copy down whatever I write for six, seven, and 10, and this is gonna be test reflection. So we're gonna do questions six, seven, and 10. So just on your notebook paper, right, test reflection. Then I want you to draw a graph. They gave me this graph, but I'm gonna recreate it. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. We're gonna label the Y and the X axis and we're gonna look for some key points, and the key points are negative four, negative four, and zero, negative six. So on my graph, I'm just gonna make some imaginary line. I'm not gonna even make a scale. I'm gonna put zero, negative six, because on your journal, you're just gonna make a quick sketch. And then the other one is negative four, negative four. So it's gonna be a little bit higher. Maybe something like that. Connect those two dots with a line. And now that you've drawn that in your journal, let's look for the y-intercept. The y-intercept, you're going to write this down, y-intercept is where the line touches the y-axis. The y-intercept is where the line touches the y-axis. After you've written that down, let's look at the graph. We labeled the y-axis. The y-axis is the axis that's going up and down. You can see that the line touches at that dot, which is at 0, negative 6. Since they wanted you to just fill in the bubbles, they only want one number, that number is that number they want is the y. So the answer to this question is y equals negative six. The question wanted the y-intercept. So we wrote down the y-intercept is where the line touches the y-axis. Then you look at your graph. You look at where it touches the y-axis, which is the vertical line. You can highlight it and then you're gonna write down whatever the y value was because we're looking for the y-intercept.
and that's how you would get number six right. Number seven. Remember, whatever I write down, you're also going to write down. So you don't have to write down all this question. You're just going to write down whatever tips I give you. So you'll write seven. We have a square scaled each of its dimensions by three. Scaled by, they said multiplying, and another word for multiplying is a factor. So it's scaled by a factor of three. If you're going to scale each of its sides by three, that means each side is three times longer. And all of these are talking about perimeter. So let's just do a little quick example. We have a square, and each side is 1. We changed that by multiplying by 3. When you multiply 1 times 3, that new side is going to be 3. Since all of the sides are the same, each side is now going to be 3. We're looking for perimeter. Perimeter is all sides added together. So if we look at the first square, the perimeter is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and that's the left, bottom, right, and the top. When you add those ones together, you get 4. For the new square, the perimeter is going to be the left, which is 3, plus the bottom, plus the right, plus the top. That's going to make 6 plus 6, which is going to make 12. So the perimeter of the square on the right is 12. The square on the left is 4. So the perimeter changed from 4 to 12. The perimeter started as 4. Once we multiply by the scale factor of 3, the perimeter became 12. How many times bigger is that? From 4 to get to 12. What do you multiply by to get from 4 to 12? Well, let's look at these answer choices. From 4 to 12, is that 12 times bigger? No. Is it 9 times bigger? No. From 4 to 12, is that 3 times bigger? Yes, it is. The new square is 3 times the perimeter of the original square. The way that you remember that is, whatever the scale factor is, the perimeter increases by that same amount. So your final hint. Perimeter multiplies to increase by exactly the scale factor. One more question to write down in our notes. This final question shouldn't take very long since, once again, it's about a scale factor. And we need to write down, just one more time, scale factors multiply. The scale factor is 4 thirds. We're talking about as this, the origin is the center of dilation. That doesn't mean anything to you. It just means we're doing a normal dilation. In geometry, the origin as the center of dilation will matter, but that's not for another two years away. So let's just look for these and see which one has the scale factor multiply. Let's look back at the question. 
what was the scale factor? The scale factor was equal to 4 thirds. So which one of these has 4 thirds, not 3 fourths, 4 thirds multiplying, not adding, and not 4 and not 3, but 4 thirds multiplying? The answer is G. So please make sure you wrote down the key hint, scale factors multiply. Thank you for taking your notes. Please submit the piece of paper that you wrote them on as proof that you did this today.